Hey everybody, it's Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and today is Beaujolais Nouveau Day. So I went out to grab a bottle, and then I was like, well, you know what, if I'm gonna grab one, I might as well grab another, because I saw that I was at Trader Joe's and they had the Charles Shaw one. But then I was like, well, if I'm gonna buy one, I might as well go someplace else, like Total Wine, and buy another. And so um, I ended up with three bottles. Uh, we're gonna review them all today, and I'm gonna tell you which one's the best bang for your buck. Stay tuned. Before we get into today's review, if you find this video helpful, then subscribe, share it with a friend, click that notifications bell so you know when live streams and other videos are posted, and leave a comment and just let me know. Because sometimes it's, it's nice to know people watch these and actually pay attention to this part. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get to the review. I have three Beaujolais Nouveaux. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to start left to right. Um, mostly because this is the one that I got at Total Wine. These other two I got at Trader Joe's. This one is also being sold at HEB and Total Wine as well. Um, but I don't want to start with the $3 one. I want to start with the good ones and I want to make my way to the $3 one to see how this compares to the other two after I've had them. So uh, the first thing I gotta do is I gotta open these things up. So uh, let's just cut to that part right now. So I haven't fully opened them yet, but I do want to note um, this one and this one have synthetic corks, and it looks like the Trader Joe's one, the $3 Nouveau, has a real cork. Just, just wanted to point that out before we actually got to the tasting. All right, so now that everything's open, I'm gonna set two of them aside, and let's focus on this first one. This one is the Jean-Claude de Bon, and I probably mispronounced that because I mispronounced everything, so just deal. Uh, 2020 Beaujolais Nouveau, it's from the Beaujolais AOC. It is 13% alcohol by volume, and I paid $10 for this one at Total Wine. Uh, on a quick note, if you are drinking a 2019 Beaujolais Nouveau, it's not Beaujolais Nouveau, it's just Beaujolais pretty much at that point. I mean, the style is Nouveau, but it this is the first wine of the harvest this year. So it, they all should be 2020. If you're drinking something that's not a 2020 when you're at the store, and they're selling it to you, it's a year old, just, just so you know. So let's go ahead and take a look at the color. Now, because this is basically straight out of the fermentation tank, um, it better damn well be a purple color. If it has any sort of aging notes on it, I would be very concerned by this. Uh, so in terms of color, you are a medium purple, no artifacts, no cloudiness. The nose, ah, okay, so this, this, this is one of the reasons why I love Gamay. It's a very grapey grape. You normally get a, uh, a good note of actual grape elements coming out of this grape. And I, I get it here. Lots of grape. There's maybe like a hint of something else. Um, oddly enough, I'm getting, I'm getting what is almost like a, like a very slight black peppery note to it. And then maybe, maybe a dash of cinnamon, just a tiny, tiny bit. But I mean, it's mostly just a very strong grape note. Uh, but let's get to the taste. Medium plus acid, medium body, alcohol, medium alcohol, intensity, medium intensity on the intensity, intensity, medium. Uh, I mean, it really is a great bomb with a little supporting elements. The tannins aren't very high at all. It's, uh, I would say it's probably about medium minus tannins. It's, it's a Beaujolais Nouveau. This is, this is one of those things that signals kind of fall for me. And I just really like having this wine around because I think it's one of the wines that if you have a picky audience and you are the host for Thanksgiving or you were going to some picky folks and uh, you want to bring wine or you're in charge of the wine, Beaujolais Nouveau is a really good thing to pair with Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, I mean, it's right up there in my opinion with like Pinot Noir. So, and it's cheap. It's like really cheap. It's 10 bucks. And that one, if that one's any good, that's three bucks. So, I mean, you can buy a good number of bottles and uh, it'll, it'll last you a, a good chunk of time through that celebration. Unless your in-laws talk politics and then good Lord, buy a few cases. So in terms of the blick on this one, uh, balance, uh, I think you're in balance. I think everything works. Length, medium finish, half a point. Intensity, overall medium, half a point. And complexity, no points. Just because 
you're not gonna get complexity with this wine. You're basically gonna get grapes, acid, maybe a touch of secondary somehow, and that's pretty much it. So with that being said, two points, you're a good wine. $10 is not a bad price for you whatsoever. Let me take one more sip and let's get to the other Beaujolais Nouveau. All right, so now we have our second Beaujolais Nouveau that I was able to buy. Uh, and I would have bought more, but I went to like four stores and could only find three different bottles. And so you guys get these three today. If you find more, then good luck for you. So let's look at this one. This is the 2020, of course, Beaujolais Nouveau. It is uh, the Georges de Bouffe, and I probably mispronounced that to you. I apologize, especially since this guy's a really solid winemaker, especially Beaujolais Nouveau when he passed away earlier this year. So I'm really sad about that. I hope that they continue making great wine in his name. Um, but anyway, so all that being said, 13% alcohol by volume, paid $10 for it at Trader Joe's, but it's also available at Total Wines and HEB. So pouring this out, it looks exactly like I hope it would. It is medium purple, no artifacts, no cloudiness. All right, so on the nose, huh, that's interesting. So this one actually feels like it has like more of like a mallowy note to it. Like, like there's a kind of this like bread coming out of this and a little bit of like a cheesiness to it, but not very much, it's just barely there. There is a lot of that strong grape note. I'm actually getting the alcohol a little bit more on this one than the other one. So let's, I can't, can I swirl both handed? Okay, like maybe. Uh, okay, this is not a good hand for me. Yeah, so this is very grape forward. Almost like a candied grape now that I'm going back at this one. This one is more of a deep dark note, like a darker grape. Very similar secondary, like a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of like a, a cinnamon. But if you want a lighter of these two, wait, okay, this one. If you want a lighter of these two, this is your lighter one. So bright colors, yay, I'm a light wine. Um, if you want something that's a little bit more darker, more brooding, but still very Beaujolais, -y, this one. Um, at least on the nose, let's see how it tastes. So, medium acid, medium body, medium tannins. This has a little bit more tannin to it. This is definitely a darker one. There's also like a slight hint of black cherry in here as well. This is this is a more of a brooding nouveau. That's the one you bring to parties. This is the one whenever you realize you have to spend Thanksgiving dinner with the in-laws. Um, but anyway, so this is this is a nice one. I really do enjoy the fact that it's so much darker than the other one. Yeah, yeah, this is like the, the emo kid version of a, of a Beaujolais Nouveau. But let's get to the Blick. So from a balance standpoint, one point, you're in balance. Length, medium, just like the other one, half a point. Intensity, gonna give you medium. I'm still getting a medium intensity on this wine. Um, it has less acid, but it has more, more of like a denser primary fruit, so they kind of even out. Uh, and from complexity, primary, hardly getting any secondary enough to even count it. So no points there. Two points, you're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this over here and we get to the third Beaujolais. All right, so I said this is Beaujolais, but it's actually not. So the reason why this is called the Charles Shaw Nouveau is because it comes from California. It doesn't come from Beaujolais. So they can't call it Beaujolais, but it's still kind of made in a very similar style and th thought process. So let's take a look at this. Holy crap, you are nowhere close. You are nowhere close. Hold on, let me get a picture of this. Okay, so I went ahead and I'll, I'll put those side by side so you can see them. This is nuts. This thing is like a light ruby. Very light ruby. Very, very light ruby. It is, does not look like Beaujolais Nouveau at all. It is super, super light. As you can see in the picture, the one on the right is the first Nouveau I did. It is pretty dark compared to this one. Um, night and day darker. So with that being said, uh, yeah, light ruby, no artifacts, no cloudiness. Let's get to the nose. Okay, you don't smell like the others either. At all. No, you don't smell like it. You smell uh, like there's cherry 
raspberry, maybe a touch of sour strawberry, and um, kind of a barnyard funk. And maybe a bit of plastic. Like, old plastic barrel. Yeah, uh, you don't smell like any of the Beaujolais Nouveau. No, I, I wouldn't even have said this was a Beaujolais Nouveau if you gave it to me, even though it says Nouveau. Um, but it says Red Table Wine. It's not even hinting that it has the Gamay grape in it. It could be a blend of other stuff. It's just the Nouveau release of the Charles Shaw blends. Um, but let's taste it. So all of those fruit elements are there. Medium minus finish. Medium intensity. Medium minus body. It's kind of tastes like fruit juice. This was three dollars and it was twelve and it's twelve point five percent alcohol by volume. Uh, and on that note, I'm done with it. I'm not even gonna entertain this wine. I just realized I haven't blicked this, so I had to bring it back. Uh, in terms of balance, I'm not gonna give you any points. Uh, you don't have enough acid to carry the fruit notes, so the fruit kind of tastes flabby. You don't have enough body to actually make it feel like I'm drinking wine. It feels like it's almost like a um, off dry to medium dry grape juice. That's kind of what it, it's like, so it doesn't really have much there. Uh, length, medium minus finish, no points. Uh, intensity, you have you have a medium intensity on, on the palate. Medium on the nose, I'll give you half a point. Complexity, no points. Uh, that gives you half a point. I'm just gonna give you bad. I don't like you. Uh, so stay tuned to the end of the video to see what happens with this wine. Uh, with that being said, these two are pretty damn nice. If you want something that's that you're gonna bring to a party, people are gonna drink it, have a good time, not take things seriously, this is your Beaujolais. If you wanna probably pair it with a meal or a little bit more of like a serious drinking occasion, this is your Beaujolais. They're both $10, you can find them in tons of different places. Uh, and I really do think that they are good. Now I'm just doing a blanket quality assessment of the wines, so in terms of them on a W set scale and overall complexity, not knowing what the grapes would be, and this was just a blind, they're both good. Now, with that being said, with that being said, I think there is something cool here. So, they both, in terms of Beaujolais, probably lean in towards very good. They both have different characteristics. They both have a different style. They're both Beaujolais Nouveau, and they are both really good representations of Beaujolais Nouveau. So in this case, the blanket assessment is good, not knowing what they are. Knowing they're Beaujolais Nouveau, and they're not supposed to have complexity in terms of like crazy tertiary or like a crazy ton of barrel notes, I would say they're both very good representations of Beaujolais Nouveau. If you spend $10 on them, you're not going to be disappointed whatsoever. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had either of these Beaujolais? And will you please promise me you will stay away from the Charles Shaw one? Uh, if you have, please let me know, and I will see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, well, I need to shoot the outro, so stay tuned for that. And yeah, I got two bottles of Beaujolais. What else am I going to do tonight? All right, this is what happens to wine when it's bad. Bye-bye, Charles Shaw. See you later.